women are born with pain built in. It's our physical destiny. Period pains, sore boobs, childbirth. They have minds and they have souls as well as just hearts. And they've got ambition and they've got talent as well as just beauty. Men don't. They have to seek it out. They invent all these gods and demons and things so they can feel guilty about things, which is something we do very well on our own. And I'm so sick of people saying that, that love is just all a woman is fit for. I'm so sick of it. No longer a slave, no longer a, a machine with parts. But I'm, I'm so lonely. When I was in grad school, I had the sweetest roommate ever, okay? Her name was Salima, and if you're watching, hi, how are you? So one day, I come home from class, and I look over to Salima, and she looks absolutely, just totally devastated, okay? And I ask her, I'm like, hey, like, what's going on? She basically told me that she had gotten scammed out of $500. I was like, what? How? How did this happen? So Salima was an international student, and I really don't know how these people got her information, but she had received a call that day from like some scammers or hackers pretending to be like they were from some government agency. And I, I honestly forget like exactly what agency they said that they were. But they seemed legit enough and scared this poor girl enough to the point where she was totally like, oh my gosh, like if I don't send them this $500 now, I'm literally going to get into trouble. So she literally went to the bank and ended up wiring them this money. I mean, this whole experience was literally like traumatizing for her and $500 for a broke college student is a lot of money, okay? And this is why I think it's important to introduce you to today's sponsor, Aura. If you Google yourself right now, you'll be shocked at the amount of personal information that you can find on yourself online. It's honestly so concerning, and as a woman especially, it's extremely scary. And I don't know if you guys saw this on the news, but AT&T recently revealed that 73 million customer records of theirs were actually released into the dark web. I mean, you hear stuff like this like every other day, but it honestly is always wild, right? And now they're coming back and recommending that everybody just focus on, you know, password management and monitor their accounts, etc, etc. And I'm basically like, I don't have time for this. I'd rather Aura take care of it for me. There are so many different data brokers that are out there exposing your information literally selling your full name, your address, and God knows what to scammers, hackers, and anybody else that's willing to target you. And this is exactly where Aura is going to help. Aura can not only show you which data brokers are actually out there selling your information, it can actually submit opt-out requests on your behalf, and that makes these data brokers legally required to remove your information. This way, you get protected from the scammers or hackers out there that are trying to get into your bank account, social media accounts, and anywhere else your sensitive information exists. So I really do think that you guys should really take a look and check out Aura because privacy at the end of the day is everything. For my community here, please go to www.aura.com slash brown fireball to start your two week free trial today. And this is also linked in the description of this video. Thank you so much to Aura for sponsoring this video. Now let's get into it. All right, so we all know that the internet is an extremely crazy place, okay? You can literally rise to fame overnight with a very intriguing and catchy 50 part series, right? And lots of people are always critiquing, always discussing whether it's Taylor Swift, whether it's the 4B movement, or whether someone wants to be child free or not. But one trend that I want to get into today was one where women were basically taking their natural, like makeupless faces, okay? posting it to TikTok, and then welcoming everybody essentially on TikTok uh, to come and guess their age. Respectfully, you look like you're pushing 45. Stop getting filler or Botox, whatever you have. It looks so bad. 45? I get like, okay, maybe like late 20s, 30s. 22. Yeah. Shocker. Now, every single woman that posted such a picture, or at least the majority of these women were in their um, 20s or maybe 30s. Some, very rarely I saw, were maybe in their 40s, one or two in their 50s. But for the most part, a majority of the women that were posting this was maybe like late 20s to like mid 30s-ish. 
And the comment section on these videos, oh my god, it was traumatizing. And then, of course, as you would guess, fights broke out between the Gen Zs and the Millennials, and I'm just sitting here like, what is going on here? Please. I am 23. I'm 23. I'm 23. JK, I'm 37. Here's the thing, whether you're in your 20s or in your 30s or even beyond, like I'm tired of people saying, oh, you look so young for your age. Like people in their 20s and 30s are young, okay? So I'm just over here like... I recently saw this video, uh, essentially it was like this roundtable conference where there were a whole bunch of like talented actresses and JLo uh, present and they were just talking about various different issues, right? They were talking about aging and ageism in Hollywood and things like that. And Renee Zellweger really said something that stood out to me. And she basically said, I want to look like the life that I've lived. You know, I'll get the cutoff shorts and the, you know, the other woman, uh, the, you know, uh, one night stand girl. And I did about three or four of those little jobs in Texas while I was still at university. And I thought, you know, I think, um, I think I'm going to not do this anymore because I, I know where that road will go. I don't know what it's gonna look like ultimately, but I bet it would be really hard to get off that road. Mm -hmm. And there's the inevitability of things changing and your body changes and you know, you grow older and you know, you have a life and you look like your life and thank God for that, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. I thought, I wanna be good with the inevitability. Mm -hmm. I wanna be good with that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I want to work in a way where um, I, can, I can portray women who are relatable um, throughout my life. I don't want to have to stop at a particular time because I can't wear the cutoffs anymore because it looks weird, you know? It's a bad idea. Or it doesn't really relate to the person that you grow into or whatever I bet it still it looks be. good. <laughs> yeah. In the next few years, I know I'm going to age a lot and I'm okay with that, okay? Because my unique smile lines will be a testament to all the happy days that I've had the privilege of living. And every single sign, right, on my face that shows aging is going to make my face imperfectly perfect. A hot mess that I can't wait to embrace. Why is it that aging is seen as such a curse rather than a privilege, right? Like, I don't want to get morbid here, but I think we all know that death is inevitable, right? So why not embrace it? But we as society, we've become so obsessed, or have we become obsessed or have we always been obsessed so much with beauty and aging and youth? So much so that we're actually forgetting the way society is shifting. More and more women are choosing to date very selectively, okay? Marrying well into their 30s if they do marry and having children even further along if they ever do decide to have children, right? Like living, they're traveling, they're like literally enjoying their lives. And guess what? The older they get, the more they're able to do these things. I mean, I just love how Pamela Anderson is literally defying beauty standards as they stand today, okay? She's literally going out totally barefaced without makeup, making a statement, and people can have their opinions on it, good or bad. But at the end of the day, I think one thing we can all agree upon is the fact that she's extremely brave for going out like that. And we all know Miss Pamela Anderson has been living in her chaotic energy, you know, her entire life. And I think a lot of us uh, millennial women have as well at this point, right? Like we will all have youth and then one day if we're lucky, we're going to go past it. And we can either embrace the inevitable, embrace the hot mess that we are at every stage along the way, or you can try to hold on to sand really tightly and make a fool out of yourself. And while aging and beauty standards are just one piece of the struggle, there's so much more that we as women have to navigate in our journey into becoming ourselves and in our journey, you know, which is womanhood. But also the beauty, the hot mess, and the complicated nature that is being a woman of today. All right, so now let's talk about one of the major reasons as to why a lot of us modern women are really, really going through it today. But let me tell you something, I would rather be going through it than be a pick me, okay? And of course, I'm talking about dating and relationships. It is a well-known fact that more and more women today would rather choose 
peace and cats than red flags and torture. If there is one thing any of us ladies out here can take from Miss Risa Tisa's story, it is to never ever take any red flag lightly, okay? And we see that on TikTok and then we see something like this. Listen, some of y'all ladies gonna have to settle. I'm sorry to be the bearer of bad news, but listen, everybody can't have a perfect man out here. It ain't even enough of us around, like, let's be honest. Well, at the end of the day, we can go ahead and put that 50-50 conversation to rest because every woman ain't going to get 80, 20, 100, 0, whatever y'all thinking is going to be 60, 40. Some of y'all going to have to go 50, 50 and shit, y'all might got to go 60, 40 on your end with the man. And this is infuriating, right? But the thing is that I would rather pull out each and every eyelash off of my eyes one by one than settle. And you know what? Like, I was one of those women that craved love and companionship and connection. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. It's almost natural. But I would have much rather spent every single waking day of my life disillusioned, cynical, a hot mess, lonely, okay? than to be in the wrong relationship with an emotionally incompatible man. I'm sorry, but no. And I just love that more and more of women are embracing the same mentality today, embracing the mess that is dating, embracing the complications and the mess that can sometimes be our own emotions. Because if that means we find the right partner later on in life, or we escape the wrong man now, it's totally worth it. But while we're in all of this, while we're absolutely in it, it's not exactly easy, right? We as women, but even us as humans, right? We desire connection. We desire touch. We desire acceptance. So very often, the emotions that actually come with the attempts of finding love while you're in that process, they're never going to be easy and they're not going to be steady state, that's for sure. There will be days where we as women, we will know that we made the right decision, but we will also not feel the best because making the right decision isn't always uh, easy, right? And sometimes you just want to slip. You just want to slip into the juices of the wrong decision, right? But if you slip, you know that you're going to be taking many, many steps backwards. And sometimes you have to take one step backwards to take five steps, you know, forward. Because progress, again, we all know it's never linear, but it's through this painful process that you come to terms with your own needs, your own desires, and your own standards of fulfillment as a woman. And yeah, while we all crave romantic love, I mean, let's be real, it really isn't the end-all be-all, right? Like, let's put that out there. There's so much more to life, like your friendships, your family, your social interactions and things like that. They can all work together to really add meaning to your life. And this leads me to the next almost inevitable reality, right? Because if more and more women are finding fulfillment in other aspects of their life, in non-romantic, for example, aspects of their life, well, then where do children fit into the equation? More and more women are freezing their eggs as insurance until they meet the right person, if ever. And more and more women are also deciding to go child-free because if you don't have everything lined up perfectly, why bring children into, into chaos, right? And I've done a deep dive on whether to be child-free or not, right? So I won't go into that too much here, but with the rise of the 4B movement and with the rise of more and more women deciding to go child-free, I mean, this is really shaking up the core of society. Maybe a societal framework that historically has not benefited women at all finally deserves a shakeup. There is this constant nagging sound that plagues so many of us when we compare ourselves to anybody around us. This is directly tied to one's self-worth where, for example, you're comparing yourself to the prettiest girl in high school, who, by the way, also married rich, okay? Who, by the way, is about to have her second child and she's glowing as a pregnant woman and her first child is like the most adorable baby that you've ever seen in your entire life and you're just like, okay, everything is perfect for this woman. And I'm just over here trying to like pay rent at the end of this month, okay? Or I'm crying and they start laughing or there's people sitting in the waiting room and they're and they're like me but prettier mm. and better at the because maybe I'm not good enough. 
society has set so many milestones and especially I think for women to achieve at certain ages and stages of their life like oh make sure you're married by 30 make sure you have two kids by 35 otherwise you're a geriatric pregnancy okay oh and by the way you better make sure you lose that baby weight real quick and make sure you look better now than you did before you had those kids and don't you dare complain about balancing motherhood with your career okay like it will never end and it'll never be enough for them the journey that most of us women have to undergo to come into ourselves to truly embrace who we are and to face the demons of self-worth and our insecurities head on it's never ending and it's constant I mean, I had the best self-esteem ever, the highest you can imagine, okay, as a kid. And then I went to high school and I was like, oh, well, you're not even close to being the prettiest girl in class. But then I comforted myself and I was like, okay, at least you're the smartest. But then you go into undergrad and grad school and you're not even the smartest anymore. And then you tell yourself, okay, well, at least I'm among the top respectable, you know, percentage of students, right? Oh, but well then are you dating or are you single? It is just a can of worms. And what exactly is meant to happen to our cute little self-esteem and self-worth along the way? At how many points in our lifetime have we been meant to feel less than, insecure, not enough, behind, right? Like not worthy, almost there, but not quite there enough. Coming into who you are and realizing your true internal needs and actively working to meet them and staying strong until you get there. I think this is a journey that all of us women, we have to go through like on the daily. More and more of us women are fighting the societal chains that existed for us since the dawn of time, okay? And we're going out and we're getting educated and we're finally living the life that we always dreamed of. But while that means we can travel and live life on our own terms and have financial independence, it also means we have to work and, you know, put in all the hours to make sure we're ahead of the curve and really try hard to not get emotionally or economically exhausted along the way. Whether it's imposter syndrome at work or whether you're just getting started and you're unsure of like where to go or whether you've had a bad date and so your self-esteem is like at rock bottom, you know, for the rest of the week or whether it's just navigating and making it through the day to day without becoming a totally disillusioned and cynical mess. I honestly have a love-hate relationship with the complicated journey that is being a modern woman of today. It isn't easy, that's for sure, but none of us are perfect and so we shouldn't have to pretend to have picture-perfect lives, right? And no, we don't have to have it all, especially by a certain age, if ever, because every person's path is different. The thing is that the road to empowerment and coming into your particular and unique version of womanhood is daunting, it's ugly, it's complicated, it has its own curveballs, but honestly, it's the only road worth traveling. All right guys, it's all from me today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one.